but I've measured off each one so that I know what the lengths are. Finally, I can get on and start putting these battens in. Well, after putting in a little struggle, I've changed my mind. <laughs> But as you've been able to see, it's very, very flexible. I think it's a good game plan because I can get five done full lengths in one go. Whipping up those quick jigs out of the plywood made short work of that. Final primer undercoat for this first batch of lining. Well, it is nice to make a start. I've just unpacked all of this so that I can measure it, just to check with what I ordered that it's all here. And actually there's more than I ordered, which is very nice. But I've measured off each one so that I know what the lengths are. And in fact, the ones that are still under mistress there, I've just measured the internal maximum length and they are well, well in excess. So. I'm actually going to cut those off, which will make storing what I'm not going to be using on in the shed a lot easier. And how good is this? Finally making a start on the lining. Finally, I can get on and start putting these battens in. I'm going to start with this very aft one, that beam just on the port side of the companionway. And so the process is, I just need to knock a bit of foam on the other side of the beams where I need to put the washer and the nut on the back. I'll then just give a light sand to the beam as I will the surface that's going to be bonded to the beam. Give them a quick wipe with a damp cloth and then I'll put it in place, mark where I've already got those pre-drilled and painted holes through the beams, drill those holes through the battens, then apply some good Fix 15 to the beams, put the batten up, bolt it in place, and hopefully they'll set at a nice curve to which I'll be able to screw that beautiful Western Red Cedar panelling. Well, that's number one, <laughs> only a hundred more to go.
well, this is going well. I'm really already getting into a bit of a rhythm with the process that I'm putting these in with. And I can see, I'll just get the music going and just continue. And yeah, I think these will go in fairly quickly. Fingers crossed as always. Just a couple of things to note. You can see here that I've got a clamp in place. There's the very, very odd one out where there's not two holes for every piece. And so that's fine because I'm adhering these with the Fix 15 as well as bolting them, a clamp in place until that Fix 15 goes off will be enough for that lining. The Western Red Cedar weighs almost nothing. So it's really not worthwhile drilling a hole through the steel and then having to wait 48 hours for two coats of the epoxy primer and undercoat. I'll just clamp them. The Fix 15 will do the job job done I say and also just to point out the bolts that I'm using 316 stainless steel of course and they're these little button heads and they're backed up with a nylock locking nut Well, after putting in a little struggle, getting this bit of batten over that bulkhead to the next beam where it stops, I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'll explain why, but what I do want to do is put some bits of angle that will connect the top of this bulkhead to the beams above. I've decided that I am going to cut them short because it'll just make life much easier when it comes to fitting that bit of angle. And another little detail I just thought I'd point out is this beam overhead, because I pretty much pre-drilled all of the holes for everything that I could possibly think of, what I did do is put two slightly larger holes here to take slightly larger bolts. And the purpose of those was in case I decide to have a pillar post here, right in the companionway so that when you come down, you got something to grab a hold of. Now, I'm not sure if I want to go ahead with that. There will be things to stop you traveling and moving and being pushed around the boat when underway by the bulkhead here and the bulkhead of the galley. However, those two holes are there. It's all painted. In case ahead, I decide, yeah, I would like a post here. It'll go neatly between that beam above down to the galley here. Well, although it looks like I'm at the end of the saloon here, yes, this one's gone up, but I do have a couple of others to do behind the camera there. Because I needed to cut a couple, they're just going through the painting process with the ends. No big deal. Anyhow, I just thought I'd say a couple of things about this material I'm using. It's basically pine and it's got that coating over it. But as you've been able to see, it's very, very flexible. And that was the thing that I asked the timber salespeople was whether they had anything that was flexible. And this was pretty much the stuff they said that would do the job. And I can say 
it pretty much has. I have had a couple of failures with one about where the camera is there. It's a longer one and it gets that full curve of the coach roof and having the hole drilled in the middle, it's obviously a weak point and it did actually snap right in that middle there. So I've had to do things a little bit different and for example, the last couple I've done, I haven't drilled the holes in the middle. I've actually just been propping them like I have here and I'm gluing them with the Fix 15. And as you can see, for example, I've got a couple of little wedges in here just to get that batten just shy of the beams so that that lining will be sitting on the timber and not the beams themselves. So like everything, you live and learn as they say, but it's coming up well. I'm pretty damn happy with it. And now that I've got to this stage, once I get those other couple done, oh, I can get oh, the first piece of Western Red Cedar in down that center line. I just think that's going to be such a game changer. I can't wait. Okay, well the game plan here is that I'm not going to do too much for the first go because, well, a couple of reasons. I just want to get the hang of it so I don't want to do too many at once. But also we have had a few days of showers on and off and today's meant to be the same. So what I'm going to do here, although you only see four strips there, there's another one underneath this one. And so what I'll be doing is I'm going to sand both top and bottom brush them off, wipe them off with a damp cloth. Then I'll be using the Dulux one step and then I'm going to roll it on. I think it's a good game plan because I can get five done full lengths in one go. When it comes to working out the lengths, I'll just cut them and then I'll just have the ends to touch up. And the thing that I really like about the idea of this is that it's looking like I'll be able to get a lot done quickly. I had another chat with the guy that supplied me with all of this. I was just concerned that this little tongue and groove profile, by the time I add that Dulux one step paint, that it might make the joint a bit too tight. He sort of reassured me that this will actually soak up a lot of that paint. So it shouldn't leave a thick coating with that tongue and groove joint. And lastly, that if it is a bit thick, just a light sand with 120 grit, We'll knock it off and that should go together nicely. Okay, well there's step one, getting both sides sanded. At this stage, I'm not gonna bother trying to sand the tongue and grooves themselves because they really are very smooth. The machine's done a good job. The main thing with giving it a sand on the top and bottom is really just to remove any little machining lines. It does give it a much nicer feeling too, of course, nice and soft. But anyway, as I say, I'm gonna leave the tongue and grooves and just see how this first lot goes together after I've painted them. The other thing you might notice is some of the bits have got some fairly significant sort of damage in them. I was supplied an extra nearly 30 meters from what I ordered. So the fact that there's a couple of pieces that have got some damage to it really doesn't bother me. The other thing is that almost all of these pieces will need to be cut to fit into the boat. So lots of angles, lots that won't be used. The last thing is that, for example, this piece with the face up, this is actually the bottom. So there's three good reasons there that I'm not worried really. 
I was supplied extra, a lot will need to be cut out, and on unpacking everything I noticed that the damage was only to the undersides. So this is looking really good. I've got a good feeling about this. Well, pondering how I was going to get all these edges painted and be able to do them in a bit of a production line, I was thinking about it yesterday afternoon, whipping up those quick jigs out of the plywood, made short work of that. And now what I'll do is, as I mentioned, each of the edges where the tongue and groove is, I'm only going to do one kind of paint and that only needs to sit for an hour. Then I can flip that over, do the other edge, and then that leaves the face. If there's any dribbles, I'll give that a quick sand, but otherwise I'm hoping to be able to do the two edges and the face all in one day. Final primer undercoat for this first batch of lining. <laughs> Well, that's got that first batch of battens in. Nice. 
There is one more to do, which is on that forward bulkhead there between the saloon and the V-berth. But as you can see, I've sprayed some PU expanding foam because there was a small gap between the bulkhead itself and the frame. I didn't want any moisture to be collecting in there. So just a bit of foam. And then I'm going to do something a little bit different with regards to the batten for that end because that bulkhead doesn't really go up high enough to give enough meat in the plywood to secure a batten. So I'm actually going to have to put a batten underneath where that lining will sit. So instead of the lining screwing up to the batten, it's going to sit on top of the batten and I'll be able to screw up to the panelling from below. Oh my goodness, that looks good. Well, there's no prizes for guessing how happy I am seeing this up. Oh, how long I've been waiting to see this. This is what you call a sight for sore eyes. I know the lighting's not good for your viewing. It's not only, well, it's not only that there's something covering that ugly insulation, it's so many other things the V-Groove, I am so happy with. Again, this is exactly as I envisaged so many years ago. But also, even though it's painted white, you get the grain coming through. You get the hint of that beautiful Western Red Cedar grain coming through subtly through the paint. I hope that stays once it's sanded and then top coated actually because Oh man, that looks so freaking good. So there we are everybody. The lining install has finally begun, really changing things inside of Mistress. There's much more happening lately as I build the momentum again in the next episode. Well, here's another piece of the puzzle. Another thing that I can get happening is this mattress. Power in the boat, people, it's coming. Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website. And of course, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.